One of the biggest elements in a lot of fantasy settings is bad guy land, that one evil kingdom that just seems to exist to piss off the EPA. Wheel of Time has the Blight, Star Wars gave us Korriban, Game of Thrones introduced us to the dark city of Ashai, and of course there's New Jersey. Mistara is no exception, with possibly its most famous dark land being the Alphacian Kingdom of Blackheart. It's a land of black magic and few laws, where if you need poisons, assassins, or a fell artifact, they're there for the asking, if you have the gold. Think Mordor with a thriving tourist trade. I'm Mr. Welch, and it's time to go where nobody knows our name. Time to get this one off my chest first, because it's an opinion I've had for a while. Dawn of the Emperors was a disappointing box set. Trying to cover two expansive empires inside of a two 32-page book and a 128-page DMs book meant you learned very little about each empire. You were given generalities about them, but massive swaths of the books were just given a few lines of background to try to make them all fit. Many of the Alphacian provinces didn't even get a mention. Both of the empires deserved a full and devoted source book to them, rather than just getting crammed together. You could have talked into much more detail about the politics of Thyatis and many of its prominent senators or governors, or about the Alphacian Council of Epic-level wizards and its many kings and queens. It felt like a wasted opportunity into giving both the empires the attention that they actually needed. The Kingdom of Blackheart sits in the middle of the Alphacian mainland, sandwiched between several other nations on all sides. It consists of one giant forest called the Ugly Wood to the northeast, and to the southwest the kingdom is covered by lighter woods. There is only one actual city in Blackheart, the capital of Shrake, located in the northern half of the nation. There are numerous settlements set up by the various wizards that have established their towers for their own nefarious plans. These settlements are run by the wizards, or their minions, as practically their own kingdoms. They aren't true towns in their own right. That means unless you have business with the wizards of Blackheart, or you are there to carve out your own domain, you don't have a reason to be in Blackheart. The ruler of Blackheart is Hogarth the Misanthrope. He took the title of king by force, just like his predecessor did, and more than likely his successor. As his name suggests, he is not a pleasant man to be around, with the only law in the land he has given to his subjects being the order, Leave Me Alone. He doesn't rule Blackheart other than just to collect taxes when needed and vaporize anyone who dares challenge him or threaten the existence of the kingdom. He doesn't hold court. The lack of laws means he doesn't have to worry about things like trials. And his delegate to the Grand Council is just someone he pays to attend court and pretend to pay attention. The Grand Council would have removed the man years ago, except all he ever does is abstain and the other wizards appreciate the consistency. Shrake is the capital of Blackheart. It has a population of about 20,000 that somehow keeps growing despite the city's actually understated reputation for murder. It is a dark and crowded city. Buildings are built on top of each other and there's only room for more buildings and twisted roads. By law, the buildings have to be done in dark colors, like blacks or grays. Roads cannot be built straight, again by law, so the roads are all twisting and looping paths, doubling across each other multiple times. Maps of Shrake are outdated before the ink has time to dry. The narrow streets and tall buildings mean light has a problem reaching the population, cloaking the city in literal shadows. Of special note is the wall that surrounds it, because it is no mere construction of stone or wood. Instead, the wall is a summoned creature of immeasurable power called a baka, only a few inches thick, it is impervious to all mortal efforts to destroy it. Teleporting or gating into the city is impossible because of the living wall. Only entering through the city gates gets you into it. No one knows how a creature that can only be summoned by immortals ended up protecting Shrake, only that it has been there longer than anyone can remember, and the Baka isn't talking. Shrake is also known for the one place where everything is legal. Unlike the kingdom of Ne'er-do-Well that also promises an anything-goes mentality, Shrake means it. You can buy and sell things in Shrake that would raise a lynch mob in the pirate capital of Crossroads. Things like poisons, cursed artifacts, cursed scrolls, slaves, children, unwilling research assistants, endangered creatures, alien ickers, prescribed weapons, and shake weights. Inside of Blackheart, you will find mercenaries and assassins of the darkest motivations waiting to be hired. The hired swords inside of Blackheart's capital are some of the best to be found in all of Mistara, because it's truly survival of the fittest in this nation. You can find them in the city's numerous inns, taverns, zonga parlors, and brothels. The city is also known for its numerous alchemists and poisoners, openly hawking their deadly wares to the public. A minor point of pride for the city is it possesses the most successful crematorium in all of Alphacia, and possibly all of Mistara itself. It is the only 24-hour, 7-day-a-week crematorium in the Empire, and it is never lacking for business at any hour of the night. Surrounding Shrake and occupying nearly half the nation is the Ugly Forest, one of the most dangerous places on the planet. The Ugly Forest is a tightly packed woods, with many of the trees twisted and warped from centuries of magical experimentation. There are an unknown number of wizards and their towers found within, having moved to the forest because of the isolation it provides. Moving through the forest is difficult, there are few trails, and the woods are known to move around frequently. 
The forest is also home to countless fell beasts, including some of the most twisted magical experiments ever dreamed of. Many wizards dump their failed experiments into the ugly forest and forget about them so they can move on to their next project. Other wizards dump their successful experiments into the forest and watch how deadly their creation can be. Regardless, the ugly forest is not a place sane people want to be in at any time of the day. If the ugly forest had a ruler, it's a creature known as Shadoth. It was summoned from the demiplane of nightmares many years ago. Whoever brought it to Mastara has long since died, and possibly at the numerous claws of Shadoth. It is a creature comprised of a malevolent mist, some thinking it's some sort of twisted air elemental, but others believing that it is a soul eater. Regardless, it has grown to several times its normal size and is one of the greatest dangers in the entire kingdom. It is intelligent, attacking lone travelers or creatures and retreating if actually threatened. There is a large bounty on killing the creature from a number of wizards, and a body count of would-be monster slayers almost equaling the bounty. Blackheart is filled with any number of bad guys for the adventurers to deal with. The Ugly Forest is practically a combat simulator, as it has very few dungeons and a wandering monster chart longer than the actual creature catalog. Walk 100 feet, get attacked by a deformed monstrosity bent on killing everybody. Walk 100 feet, get attacked by a faceless abomination hungering for your flesh. Repeat as necessary. If the party has to track down a rather nasty villain, they're going to be in Blackheart. There are evil wizards beyond count. For fun, play a paladin from Blackheart who is the biggest disappointment to his family because they thought you were going to take up the family business of torturing people for fun and profit. Now we leave the kingdom of Blackheart in our tracks, probably rather quickly. There's not a lot of official information on it because of the way Dawn of the Emperors was written, but there's enough to make several adventures out of it. Next week we are unleashing the Dogs of War and looking at the War Machines of Mistara, from Dwarven engineered rapid fire catapults to Orcish assault chariots and the Gnomish weapons of mass destruction. But until then, remember, caveat emptor.